we can be very, very sensitive to pain, physical pain or emotional pain. Now, I am also a high sensation seeker. This can be very, very confusing because it seems like I am a conglomerate of opposites. Sensitive people could find themselves highly sensitive to caffeine, getting edgy, not being able to sleep at night. My high sensation seeking part seems to take care of the caffeine. While I definitely can feel an edginess, I am not hypersensitive to caffeine and could drink quite a lot. Bright lights, strong smells, coarse fabrics, loud noises. Our senses are sight, our hearing, touch, taste, smell. As sensitive people, we all will have a different combination of particular sensitivities. Smells and lights really, really bother me, as do fabrics that are unnatural and my skin doesn't like. Loud noises can certainly make me startle. The more that we know and bring a sense of curiosity to our sensory experience, the more we can learn what we need to limit to help ourselves live with more balance, more ease, more peace, without overstimulating or frying our own systems and lives. Highly sensitive people can be very uncomfortable in chaotic or intensely stimulating environments. Part of how my sensitivity worked as a child growing up with unsafe parents is that it informed my body to disassociate, to leave the present moment when I was getting abused sexually as a child. Which is, I think, a pretty obvious moment when a survivor of such abuse would want to dissociate. It makes sense that my body would do that since that's something that is available to happen in the human condition. It may also be part of why my memories were repressed from me from such a sense of overstimulation. It's as if my consciousness couldn't or wouldn't encode the memories Whereas my siblings, that I would make the argument, I think they would agree, are in some ways less sensitive. I am more sensitive than they are, though they have sensitivity in certain ways too. I am the most sensitive in my family. Their memories were not repressed. This helped me to leave what was abusive and harsh in my mind. It helped me survive. It was part of my survival mode. This is also a symptom of post-traumatic stress. There most certainly is a line, a line that's impossible for me to draw, but most certainly a line between my high sensitivity helping me and then my high sensitivity over-responding into the development of that post-traumatic stress. The problem with dissociation when it wasn't helping me out is that once the body and mind learns dissociation, it's like a path in the woods that is more clearly defined. It's easier for a brain body to walk that dissociative path, to reignite that dissociative process, which sort of means for a long time in my life, I had an easy tripwire into dissociating not just at times that were abusive or scary or frightening or overstimulating, at times when I really needed to stay present. Maybe like a boss giving me right and reasonable critical feedback. I've worked almost two decades now on how to teach my body safety, peace, in respect of this highly sensitive mind and body so that I could be able to learn how to control staying present from my wise woman instead of letting my fear centers or my inner child or my critical voice control whether or not I was to be present in that moment. Comment with the abbreviation HSP to get a link to the full episode. Remember to find Emotional Badass wherever you get your podcasts and hit that subscribe button.